Updating the firmware on the GSOC. The Zygu GSOC, which came out shortly, short time ago, not too long ago, a month or so, has had some serious firmware update needs. We're going to update it with the first version that came out today, coming up. Shut up and sit down. Good afternoon and welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. On this video series across multiple platforms, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. I've been a licensed operator since 1994, been on YouTube since 2015, and I love doing reviews of new items, even when sometimes those items don't work, which is that <laughs> so i did a review video about the gsoc um depends on when i post this video you're watching right now i don't know last month sometime november november did a review video in november and you, you know i'll link that right up here there's been two or three other youtubers come along and do review views about it as well long story short the gsoc was released before it was ready in my opinion even though it had been dangled in front of our face for like a year, okay? They started talking about it way before 2020. Of course, everything slowed down in 2020 due to the human malware virus and production slows down, people get sick, you know, everything's in turmoil. Understand, everything gets pushed back. I mean, a lot of the radios we were expecting this year have all been pushed back. But when it finally released, it still wasn't ready. So how do you update firmware on the GSOC? Well, we're gonna walk through those steps today. All right, so special thanks to the folks out at the nice folks out at radioddity.com. They sent me this firmware. I will share the link with you in the YouTube description below. You just download it. It comes up and uh, as a zip file. It's got it's just called Zygu GSOC firmware version 1.1 1 .1, and it's dated 1126. So I'm recording this video like uh, 2 days later and it's got three folders inside of this zipped folder which I've actually unzipped already. Here's the uh, here's the guide. It's a PDF file going through the guide. And I went through this a minute ago and kind of read up and see what we did. It's got the firmware itself, which is SD card dot IMG, and it's and it's got this loading tool, this Rufus three dot ten executable file. So basically, the long and short of it is, we have to take a micro SD card, format it. Take this micro SD card right here. We're gonna format it in a USB drive on a Windows box. And once that's formatted, we're going to put it into the micro SD slot on the side of the GSOC and boot it up in a sequence and go through some prompts. So let's do that right now. So now we've got, uh, okay, so I've got my eight gigabyte. That's just an old, that's an old card out of my drone is what that is. So now we're going to go over here. So here's, here's the instructions. Uh, preparation. You need a micro SD card that's greater or equal to four gigabytes, a reader, and a PC with Windows 7 or 10. Easy. Okay. So now we're going to run this uh, Rufus 3.10, which is, let me just open a new window there. Under SD tool, we're going to run this Rufus. Yep, that's fine. Okay. E drive, eight gigabytes. E drive, eight gigabytes. That's correct. I'm going to select the image. Go back to my desktop, open this firmware SD. It's just called sdcard.img. Okay, run that. Select the correct layer. Yeah, we did that. Select driver disk image in the drop down. Yeah, this right here. Yeah, click the select button, browse and select SD card.image file. Click start. Okay, so now we're going to go here. All of the other, other stuff is set to default. Start. Yes, it will destroy everything on the card. It's going to format the card to a new format, make it bootable. So now we're just going to wait. Okay, that took like two minutes, maybe something like that. Um, less than three minutes for sure. And now it says status is ready. This um, bar at the, at the bottom, which said ready before, is now highlighted in green. So we're just going to close that. After the progress shows 100% complete, close the software, pop the card from the reader. Yeah, here's an example of what it looks like. 
Now we're going to take this out, get this little guy here. Make sure the G-Sock is turned off without connecting the DB9 and USB cable. Insert the SD card. And let me switch over to this different view. All right, so we're going to put the, the SD card in the side here, or in the, yeah, in the side, get it in the light right there. The SD card, it can kind of, there's there's kind of a gap right there between the card slot and the, um, and where the card goes. So make sure you don't drop it down inside of the case. That'd be bad. It'll, it'll kind of have some tension on it when you put it in there. And then if it falls down too far, don't lose it in the case. That's not, a, not very well designed. But then if we just kind of click it down in there, it'll go into place. You'll feel it kind of pop down like putting an SD card into a, um, a camera, something like that. Some cameras anyway. I'm going to go right there. Turn on the G-Sock. There will be a text message on the screen. The fir uh, firmware update will auto-process. It takes about two minutes. Shut down counter reminder message will appear in the screen. Then the G-Sock will auto-power off. Remove the SD card. Congratulations, firmware is done. So let's hook all this stuff up real quick. All right, let's do power cable. Boom. Power on. There it goes. Okay. There's the boot up. It's going through its own process right here. That's that's what it said it would do. It said it would go through and there would be text messages on the screen. The firmware update will auto-process and take about two minutes. Zoom down on that a bit. So we'll just wait for that to finish. The shutdown countdown reminder message will appear on the screen. Then the GSOC will auto-power off, which is what it just did. Remove the SD card. Power it back on. Note, when the update is completed, the G-Sock is automatically shut down. Be sure to remove the flashing card before turning it on. Again. Otherwise, the system will execute. Yeah. You don't remove the SD card. It'll just go through the boot-up process again. But the lights were off on these keys over here on the... Uh, zoom back out of touch. These keys over here, the lights are on now. And when it shut itself down, the lights, the backlit lights behind these keys turn themselves off so that's good to good to see this firmware now that we're waiting for this to boot at that okay here we go i don't have my radio connected give me a second and i'll do that i want to read the firmware update notes documentation change log Okay, so this firmware should solve the CW side tone delay problem, solve the problem of the unstable system and occasional crash. I actually never had mine crash on me. Uh, it added RTT, the RTTY modem and added the CW decoder, added the SWR scanner, added the FTF, FFT waterfall level adjustment, and the FFT line fill color mixer. So if you look at some of the videos that myself and a few other YouTubers have put out, I don't really think that firmware addresses much of anything. Not the stuff that we had talked about before. Let me hook up my radio here. Okay, there we go. Now it says G90 online. G90 is still plugged into a, a um, dummy load. but All right, so now... We're turning the VFO, and the waterfall is still not moving. It did not address that. Scope, radio, system. CW keyer, mic gain. Okay. That's fine. Backlight. Oh, that does dim the backlight. Okay, audio out, line out, AF, uh, CW, okay, exit. Mike K. Dermond D. Had, had noticed that this, this menu here says, ex, says exit, and a couple of the other menus just have like a, an arrow pointing, and they're not, they're not um, consistent. 
So, which which he's correct about, of course. SWR scan. It's not going to find anything right. Well, I shouldn't say that. But that seems to work. Exit. Okay. The So that's new. SWR scan is new. So the issue of the waterfall changing when you turn the knob is not resolved. That was really kind of the biggest one in my book. I mean, you know, some other people may care more about that, and that's okay. Um, upper sideband. Also, there's not there, there still doesn't seem, like under this system menu, I would expect to find a way to go into um, the Wi-Fi and GPS, or I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth it's supposed to have. And this still not in here. Mic gain, input selector, this microphone, line in, audio out, speaker, earphone, okay, exit. This thing doesn't seem to work as well. This is mount, the little mouse pointer is still there. Move that around on the screen, but it doesn't really do anything. There we go. My G90 has not been updated to um, for uh, 50 megahertz because, yeah, okay, see, here's your exit button right here. Instead of saying exit, it has this, this door with an arrow pointing to the right, which is the exit. So instead of being consistent across all the menus, it has different icons for the exit button. Whatever. Okay, well... While the firmware update itself seemed, it, there wasn't anything in the firmware update notes about the notch filter, so I assume that still doesn't work either. There's still no way to go into, oh yeah, this and that menu right there, the, if you go into modem, it's got that itty bitty X at the top right there. That's how you exit that menu. That's a third exit icon it's, it's got. Okay. Well, okay. So the good news is that the firmware update itself was quite simple. I mean, there was really nothing to updating that firmware. You just get an SD, a micro SD card, load the firmware onto it with this uh, tool that comes with the zip file you download, and boot the GSOC up without it being connected to the radio, and it goes through its own thing shuts itself down, unplug the card, boot it up again, and you're back, and you can see where it was. That's a, that's a move in the right direction. So if I click on span right here, you see the waterfall. Now, it's still not changing when you, when you turn the dial, but the span, the waterfall changes with the span. That's a, that's a move in the right direction. Display, line color, fill color, you can change that. I don't really like, well, boom, boom, yeah, you can change that. I don't particularly care uh, changing that myself. Um, typically, I'll leave it as default. Some people like to change that. That's okay. It's all a matter of personal preference anyway. So... This does not really tell you much more than it did. I was looking for a menu that would tell me what current firmware version I'm running. And I don't see a menu that says that either. If we go to radio and system, this should, it should, there should be a setting in here to tell you what current firmware version you're running. Audio out, keyer, mic gain. Nope. There's nothing in there under system for what firmware version you're running nothing like that nothing in there afo yep nothing i nothing else i'm seeing there so okay that's the date yeah you can set the date kill that yep set the date you want to gs90 online filter change that filter there so okay so 
that is um, that's where we're at right now. Again, the good news is that the firmware update was rather easy. The bad news is that the firmware update that they just released doesn't really address any of the issues that most of us on YouTube are talking about. So put your comments below. Let me know what what issues have you seen on one of these videos, or if you own one of these yourself, what issues do you want fixed next? Okay, what issues do you want see to see updated in the next version of firmware? And I'll put together an email and I'll send it to those guys. I got this firmware from Radioddity. I think it's important to note that Radioddity doesn't manufacture the G-Sock. The G-Sock is manufactured by Zygu or Shagu, Zoro, as I've called it in the past. Um, Radioddity is just a seller of it. I think Connect Systems is selling it. It wouldn't surprise me if MFJ started selling it real soon, but I bet they'll wait until they get all the bugs worked out of it. So Radioddity is just where I've I got mine from, and where they they're keeping in touch with me about firmware updates. They were the, the nice folks over there were the ones that sent me this firmware, but they don't manufacture this thing, so they probably have an ear of Zygu saying, "Hey." Guys, everybody's saying this. This is what we need to fix, but it's not really up to them directly. So put your comments below. Let me know what issues you would like to see resolved in the next firmware update, which I guess is going to be 1.2 because this is supposed to be one by one. 1.1. 1, 1 1.1. 73, guys.